On this episode of Limited Release Beer, we're headed back to Paso Robles for Firestone Walker's annual anniversary party. Limited Release Back in Paso Robles. What's on tap for today? So today we're back at Firestone Walker. This time we're going to attend the release party for the 17th anniversary beer. And it's not 100 degrees out today. I know, it's lovely. It's kind of cold actually. Yeah. No, I'm really excited to get in there and taste some awesome beers. So the 17th anniversary beer is a blend of a whole bunch of different kinds and they're going to give us all the components to go through and taste along with the 17 to see how it's put together. Oh, excellent. Uh, you know, I got to say, like, you know, we've been to a lot of breweries around the country and I don't think I've found a craft brewer yet that has such a wide range of beers and they're all just amazing. No, absolutely. These guys at Firestone Walker, Matt and his team, they're so well respected in the craft beer community. Um, they've won hundreds and hundreds of awards. In fact, they've even been named the best mid-sized brewery four times now at the Great American Beer Festival. Before we head into the party, let's go hit up another local craft brewery that's generating a lot of buzz in the region. And uh, by the way, today would be the day to wear your duster. I know, right? <laughs> Barrel House Brewing was founded in 2013 by three longtime home brewing friends with a dream to build the most unique brewery in California's Central Coast. We started home brewing years back and just kind of fell in love with the art of, of beer and just the processes and the enjoyment that, you know, when you get to watch somebody else enjoy something that you made and just started doing more home brewing, more home brewing, and decided that um, for all of us it was time for something new in life and some sort of adventure and figured why not try to take home brewing to the next level and start a production brewery, so. And here they are. Not once to dream small, they've opened a 20 barrel brew house with the ability to turn out 10,000 barrels of beer a year to follow their passion. Yeah, we, we try to brew uh, drinkable beers, um, but beers that, uh, that don't necessarily fit in a box, like a, a category, a, a style per se. You know, some of our beers are, you know, we may call it a blonde or we may call it a pale, but maybe it's too hoppy or maybe it's too malty or whatever, but that's our ideal blonde, that's our ideal pale. So. A lot of our beers were kind of pushing the edge on some of our beers, like our barrel aged projects too. So to have a portfolio that's 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 drinkable and that's consumer based, but then we also have a separate portfolio that's more geared towards the beer geek, like ourselves. So we have a lot of barrel projects in the works that we can't really showcase right now, um, but they're six month, one year, two year projects that are in the works. Barrel House also hosted a Pro-Am competition where the winner was able to brew their recipe in their production system and host a release party at the brewery for the beer. How cool is that? So the, uh, the brew house itself is a Cavellar system. It's probably 20 some years old. Um, four vessel system. It's in its prime. In its prime, yeah. It's just getting warmed up. And so it's a uh, 20 barrel system. With that system, we're able to basically triple batch into the fermenters. Um, at full production, we can do over 10,000 yeah. barrels a year based on the way, you know, I have to add some more fermenters, some bright tanks, but based on the way it kind of sits now. And uh, we knew going into this that it had to be a certain type of system. And uh, that was kind of the catalyst for all this to happen. Um, and Jason found it online on Pro Brewer and was able just to work his mojo and. You Craigslist in the brewery? Pretty much. <laughs> the yeah. whole brewery, yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and it worked around and came back to the center. Yeah, and um, it, that really was the beginning and the central focal point of the entire process. I'm looking forward to actually turning a profit and being able to take some of that profit and put it towards expanding our facility and increasing our, you know, 
effectiveness of increasing our consistency, maybe getting you know some different filtering equipment, getting some different fermenters, bright tanks, uh, more cooperage, things like that. So just the, the expansion that, that we're seeing, I'm excited to kind of see that through and get into other markets and let people know what we're, what we're up to. Firestone Walker was founded in 1996 by brothers-in-law Adam Firestone and David Walker and is only one of two breweries in the world to maintain a commercial-sized Burton Union brewing system. Matt Merlin Brindelson joined the duo in 2001 and they have been on a tear ever since. Their quality has become legendary and they have been recognized at the Great American Beer Festival as the mid-sized brewery of the year four times and have won hundreds of awards for their beers. Firestone Walker specifically has always been focused on using barrels in one way or another. Um, maybe that doesn't seem unique, but in 1996 when we started the brewery to ferment in barrels was a completely foreign concept to American craft brewers. In fact, the only brewery in the world that still ferments in barrels to this day in the format the, that we are, the Burton Union System, is Marston's in Burton-on-Trent. And so I think that, you know, we've always had a pretty simple philosophy. It's make straight ahead, very drinkable, balanced beers, and try to incorporate oak in the process somewhere along the way. Now, I think that over time we've become a brewery known for our hoppy beers, we've been known for our pale ales, and more recently we've been known for our barrel-aged beers. But to be honest, if you were to ask any of the brewers here uh, in these four walls what our philosophy it is, don't waste time messing around, do it right, do it once, adhere to the 101s, don't try to get too fancy, we don't use a lot of spice or fruit or, you know, hocus pocus. Uh, we really base everything on quality and science, and you saw the lab on the tour um, you know, we put a lot of effort behind quality control and really trying to make the best beer possible. And I, I firmly believe I'll go to my grave wishing I could have made a better beer somehow. So that's our philosophy, I guess. <laughs> the first party was for their 12th anniversary ale, and it was really more of a release day at the brewery. Since then, the party has grown in size and now more than a thousand people attend the party. Leveraging the expert winemakers in the region, Firestone Walker hosts the blending party where the local vintners compete to blend the best variant. The winning recipe is then used for mixing the anniversary ale. The final blend for 17 was a combination of seven beers, six of which are aged in oak. There were two pale ales, two stouts, two barley wines, and a brown ale in the mixture. Well, so, you know, our blending program has since the very beginning, seven years ago, been guided by the local winemakers. So we felt we had a real uh, advantage there. But, you know, taking the, the story starts with us at the time only making a handful of pale ales. And we were coming up on our 10th anniversary. And Adam and David came to me and said, you know, we want you to make something special. And up to that time, we had, you know, three beers, and I hadn't really had the chance to really get crazy and experiment. So, kind of got a little out of control. We started making all these barley wines and Russian Imperial Stouts, Imperial Brown Ales, trying to figure out what we wanted to make for our 10th anniversary, meanwhile laying them down in barrels, because to be honest with you, there wasn't really any place else to put them. And then one day it dawned on us that, heck, we got a lot of different beers here. What are we gonna do? 
maybe we can make a blend and we all looked at each other saying we don't have a lot of experience doing this so you know who better to help us out but the local winemakers who you know make a career out of barrel aging and blending and so we called upon some of the very best Central Coast winemakers they came in and 10 was born or our first anniversary beer was born so to be honest with you from day one we've had their guidance and maybe um, you know a, a pretty serious advantage when it comes to figuring out how to synergistically bring these things together but um, you know that's how it happens it always happens by mistake the first time around and then <laughs> you get to actually refine it over time the line started forming around 9 a.m. as there were a few tickets for sale at the door inside the Firestone Walker crew was busy finishing up preparing for the crowd And at 11 a.m., the doors opened up and the guests streamed into the party, with most making a beeline to the draft station pouring the 17th anniversary ale. The room was set up with multiple beer stations, each serving one of the component beers in the Anniversary Ale, along with a food pairing. And it wouldn't be a party without music and games. But yeah, there's a lot of pressure to produce more private uh, or, or proprietors reserve beers. Um, you know, without letting the cat out of the bag, I think that you will see a number of new beers over the course of the next few years. Um, currently working on a Saison, which, you know, I think I always look at our portfolio of beers and whenever we add something, it's not just, hey, everybody's making black IPAs, that's what we have to do, or everybody's making Brett beers. For us, it's what fills out our portfolio and gives you know, Firestone Walker fans, kind of that extra piece of the pie that's missing. And one thing that I'm, you know, fascinated by are Saisons and rustic ales of Belgium. Um, we did a few, few small batches here and uh, so far so good. So you may be seeing that on the horizon. Uh, the working title is Opal. Um, we've got another beer that we've made a few batches of, Paraba Java which is an intensely uh, barrel-aged imperial stout that has coffee infused with it from Intelligentsia, uh, their California roast house. And, um, you know, what we like to do is we like to kind of work out the kinks internally until we all can sit around a table, look each other in the eye and say, you know what, that's a world-class beer, let's go to trade. And so I think you'll see a few things. Those are a couple uh, sneak previews of what they might be. So how are we doing so far, Rob? You know, it's a great time. Uh, it, it, was a, it feels like there's a lot of people here, but it's not really crowded, crowded. It's a, you know, a ticketed event. Yeah, it seems nice. Uh, people are coming in. They've got the, a big uh, truck full of people's allocations of beer here. Yep. And I know you can just buy, they are selling more if you just want to get a little bit yep. more as well. Yeah. But uh, I got to say, uh, I've had some pretty tasty food here. I must have gone back to the Korean barbecue place about nine times. Yeah, I think they know you by name over there. Yeah, he's shutting me off now. He said, <laughs> no more for you. Um, wow. It is, you know, again, it's a nice one of these cool ticketed events where you, once you're in, everything is all you want for free. So just go through and get what you need. And uh, what's your favorite beer been so far? Um, the 14 was awfully good, but I really like the Merkin. Uh, the Velvet Merkin. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Sticky Monkey for me, it's the first time I've actually had it. Um, it's absolutely delicious. And, you know, another barley wine. It's amazing. They have like, they must have five or ten barley wines that come out of here that are all like really cool and really good. A little bit different. A little bit different. A little bit something, something, something in there. But uh, we're going to continue enjoying the party, and we'll check back in later.
So, you know, who, which is my favorite child relative to the anniversary beers? Um, you know, I'm just gonna say, first thing out of my head is, is 10, the very first one, um, because I personally sat in here and pushed every barrel into the tank, and although it was a small batch, and um, it's long gone now, so it's hard for us to really look back at it too uh, critically. Um, I think I had the most skin in that game. Um, but you know, it's like 17 this year uh, is ready to drink out of the bottle. I mean, right off the bottle line, it was just tasting amazing. So I'm really excited today to, to get to know that beer better because I haven't had a chance to really sit down and drink it very much. And um, they all are special in their own way, but I would say 10 and 17, the book the bookends are right now my favorite. <laughs> We both had a beautiful um, love for beer, and um, we couldn't talk the family into making beer, so um, we decided to make it ourselves. So we created the Firestone Walker Brewing Company. Just seeing where California goes with us, I mean, that to me is, is, a, is a critical thing, but you know, our beers are now um, and available in a lot of states, and so um, you know, we're out and about telling our story. Um, Obviously, we're building all the time now uh, because uh, because of production. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's great. We're having a lot of fun. We'd be we'd we'd, we'd have issues if we weren't having fun. You know, we're, we're having fun. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of the double barrel ale. I actually rather like the unfiltered double barrel ale. It's a you know, DBA was our first beer. It was made in the classic style of English pale ales. It goes through our version of a Burton Union. Um, and because of that, it's sort of got a nice sort of traditional spin on it, and I like it. Hey Rob, so what do you think of the event? You know, it's always really nice when you go to these events and they're so well organized and well run. Uh, there's no rush, there's no crush, there's no big stress when you're at them. Um, you know, there's some excitement to that stuff at other events, but it's just so much easier for us as attendees and I think more fun for people when it's also well organized and easy. All the component beers laid out so that people could try all the different pieces and really, um, Kind of like what we see at Dark Lord or Darkness. I mean, there's really a lot of diehards that uh, you know that are really Firestone Walker focused. You know, one guy was telling me he had cases still of Firestone 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You know, so I mean, people really uh, really go crazy for the beer. The food pairings were fantastic. It's always fun at events when you don't have to deal with buying food or drinks that every time you walk up to a counter, it's all just open once you're there. Well, from my perspective, I mean, this would definitely be an event that I'll, I'm going to look into going to next year because it was just such a great time. And, you know, for me, it's a couple hour drive, so that makes it nice and easy. But yeah. uh, until next time, keep on drinking. I guess I kind of expected more like a barley wine. I expected from the high alcohol and the color uh, that this was going to be a barley wine with some different character to it from the blending. Uh, but it wasn't quite what I uh, ended up with. I, I guess uh, if I had to put it in a category which doesn't really exist, I would put it in as a uh, Imperial Black IPA. It's got, uh, in the aroma and, and the uh, flavor, it's got a fair amount of roast to it, but not overwhelming. Uh, it's got a lot of sweetness uh, and, and booze. Uh, and a lot of candy flavors, you know, toffee and uh, marshmallow, you know, a little, little cocoa in there. It was more than I was expecting. Uh, you know, from an IPA, IPA standpoint, you know, or black IPA, you usually get just roast and hops that clash, and this one definitely doesn't do that, so that's good. Um, as a uh, barley wine, it's definitely more complex than most of those. Uh, it's got a lot more. Uh, character and different flavors uh, mixing in there. So I, I think it's definitely an unusual beer and I've never had anything like it. Make sure you buy your ticket early as they sell out every year. 
Firestone Walker has a block of rooms at local hotels that you can take advantage of. Pick up your allocation at the end of the party so you don't have to worry about carrying it around all day. None of the beers ran out all day as they had ample supply of everything that they were serving. Go on the brewery tour that they offer as it is an amazing brew house. Grab dinner at the Firestone Walker restaurant right across the street from the event. It's a great way to unwind at the end of the party. 